All right, so let's get into it. So first, I'll, I'll give the backstory for anybody that doesn't know. Um, so yeah, you were you from Atlanta? Yep. McDonald's All American, one of the best players. Um, and then you went to Georgia Tech. I went to Cal, Cal Berkeley, Cal, Cal, Cal Berkeley, Cal, and then um, Pac-10 freshman of the year. Yep. And then you have an illustrious career in the NBA, but a lot of people struggle after their post playing career, right? They now it's like the lottery to try to become a, a broadcaster but only few people can actually really be successful as a broadcaster. And a lot of guys, you know, they're just trying to figure it out. They make money. Some people have not made great decisions with their money and, and they fall on financial hardships. But you're somebody who obviously has figured it out after his career and now you're an executive, you know, in the NBA, um, you know, running the, the G League. So um, I first want to just, you know, what was that transition like for you? Um, was this something that you always kind of had in mind that you wanted to stay in sports, but on an executive level and mentally, how was it transitioning from being a star basketball player your whole life to now, you know, being a regular citizen? Yeah. Um, you know, one, I, th I think the, the transition like starts at the beginning, you know, and I kind of picked that up from like, God, you know, the Magic Johnsons, the Isaiah Thomas, the guys before me who I, I saw do really well as they transitioned from playing and just talking to them and understanding things that they were doing, meeting people, learning, being curious while they um, were playing. And so I, I said it started there. When I retired, I had the opportunity. I retired with the Sacramento Kings. I retired early. You know, my, my knee, um, you know, I had some trouble with my knee and I couldn't, you know, the last three years of my contract, I couldn't play. And, you know, in the NBA, contracts are guaranteed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was still getting paid, but I couldn't play. And the organization asked me to stay and, and help out, and you know, help out with you know, mentor some of the younger players. Um, and what, but what they, what, what um, the guy who was the president, then a guy named Jeff Petrie, what he allowed me to do was to, you know, he asked me to mentor and help younger players, but you know, go do whatever else you want to do. So I would go and I would meet with the, the CFO. I go meet with the person who was over marketing. You know, all the areas of the organization I had never had exposure to. And, um, you know, what that did for me was just opened up, like, the idea that this is a business. And like, wow, all these, you know, we had this media deal going on and this marketing deal. And, okay, so when you guys asked us to come to this, you know, mixer, you know, to this, you know, social engagement, this is really what it was about. Um, so I, I spent two years doing that. Um, I went, I, I was, you know, kind of the one and done era. I was the at the front of that, uh, myself and Stephon Marbury. Um, so I, I, but in this time that I'm, you know, playing in the NBA and, uh, you know, now transitioning, I, I was trying to finish school. So I, and, you know, I'm in Sacramento, you know, you know, the Northern California, Berkeley was about an hour away. So during this time I went and I finished um, my undergrad at Berkeley. Um, you know, from there, you know, I kind of worked in some different areas in sports and, um, you know, before long, I kind of transitioned. I went back and got my master's. And when I finished, that led me, you know, back here um, to the NBA. I'd done an internship here internship here at the NBA one summer. So long story short, that led me. But it, it all just, it came just from being curious, you know, not wanting, you know, you know, just my playing career to be the end of, you know, what I could contribute and what I could do. Um, I wasn't sure exactly, you know, where it would lead me and what I would do. Um, but it's been, you know, again, I think I've, I've been able to take my experience playing, you know, my experience around the business and, you know, now, um, you know, cultivate that into, you know, you know, leading the G League. Yeah, what, what was that like? Hold right? on for a minute. Does he need to move his microphone closer to him? Yeah. Good? Good. Uh -huh. So, I mean, that's interesting, right? Because most people, when they think intern, they think, all right, that's the person that's going to do the job for free, that's going to learn on the fly. Being a star, being an all-star, right? Going from that part of life to now being an intern and having to start over again in a different realm, was there any anxiety, any angst, or did you have that year of that you were going around meeting CFOs? It really prompted you to say, all right, I'm comfortable in these settings. I'm going to attack this thing head on. I'm going to start from the beginning. I'm going to work my way up. Well, you know, one, you know, I was like, I I, I did it. I was in, I, so, you know, after a number of years with the Kings organization, I, I left and, you know, I, I went and, and um, went to, went to grad school, went to business school. And, and 
in between my first year and my second year, I was like, I want to experience. I want to, you know, go learn, be in a, you know, just be in a regular setting. It's hard to do that. Um, so I, I, you know, made some calls and emailed some people and uh, Mark Tatum, who's the deputy commissioner, I got in touch with him and I was telling him what I was doing. Um, you know, the story I tell is like, I was like all over the place. And he was like, look, you know, okay, I, we'll figure it out. But I ended up, you know, interning here at the, at the NBA. And, you know, like, you know, what I did, you know, honestly, you, I borrowed from my background. Like, you know, I, I, you got to start somewhere, you know, like even in, you know, nobody, LeBron didn't show up being LeBron. You know, like, you know, Jordan didn't show up being Jordan. You know, nobody, you have to, you know, you kind of have to start where you are. Um, you know, we all need people to, to help us and educate us. And then you have to be willing to do the work and, and kind of, um, you know, be open enough to, to learning. So in that part of it, um, you know, like I was, I was fine. Um, and, you know, and you know, yeah, some anxiety, you don't know what you don't know, but you know, you, you know, willing to learn and kind of, you know, ingratiate yourself to people in a way that, you know, people are willing to help and, and, and show you the way. So, um, yeah, you know, for, for me, I never, you know, again, like I never, um, um, you know, got so tied to the, the idea of, you know, like, the, all, like that was, Nice, but you know, I, I when I was young, I read a thing that said that you know if if all I did in life was you know like this thing, and that's all people knew me for, then I did a poor job of living. So I never wanted that to just be you know you know what I was known for, the only thing that I could do. So I never you know I tried not to you know just be um, labeled as you know a basketball player. 